Who will make the most money in the next three to five years? Oh, I don't know, honestly. Um, I think there'll be more than enough money for everyone. <laughs> Maybe in a few years, there'll be no more money. <laughs> <laughs> That's interesting. Yeah. Uh, two more that I have okay. to ask, and then we'll do a quick fire. When you look at the incumbent set, your Microsoft, your Apple, your Amazon, your Google, uh, who has been the worst? You said Google were actually incredibly impressive. Uh, Apple, Amazon, are they well-placed? Oh, Apple's a black box, right? Mm -hmm. So we'll see at WWDC uh, next month, in a few weeks. And so they could surprise us all. But let's face it, series crap, yeah. you know? Yeah. Uh, but they have all the ingredients in place, the identity architecture, the secure enclave, other things, neural engine, uh, stable diffusion was the first model ever optimized on the neural engine, et cetera. But let's see that one. Um, Amazon, again, Amazon have moved faster than I think they moved before. Amazon is interesting because they're an engineering organization. So they have self-driving cars. They have satellite internet and all these kind of things. Because once they've got it and they can take it from research to engineering, it's there. But one of the struggles they've had is that it's not moved from the research side yet. You're still evolving on research. So they're like, what do we do now? But they are inclusive. Like Jeff Bezos said, for his first hundred billion in revenue, he envisioned half of it being proprietary and half of it being marketplace. And they're having the same approach with Bedrock and things. Huh. Microsoft had a winning bet. Satya did amazing with the open AI thing. It's been mutually beneficial, even if there are clashes there, mm -hmm. right? And Google's kind of saying that's moving slowly. Meta, I think, is the dark horse. I think Mark's probably pissed off that OpenAI bought AI.com, so you couldn't change it from meta to AI. Um, but again, having him at the head, he can shift these things, right? Because the metaverse obviously is a complete waste. Yeah. But now- Do you think he knows that now? No, I mean, 100%. They're fully in generative AI. Look at Llama, look at OPT. FAIR, which is their research yeah. engine, is kind of leading in this field, and they're pushing out amazing stuff. But who is best for a chatbot? Who has the most data for a chatbot? Meta, yeah. you know? So again, let's see how they evolve. And like I said- What do you think about this middle layer where it's like, you know, companies that are, you know, <clears throat> maybe post IPO, but they're in the kind of two to $10 billion range, all the companies who've raised a lot of money, but they're in that range. They don't have the resources by any means to build out anywhere near the AI, cap AI capabilities of these big incumbents. They're not AI first, like stability or open AI or what? Well, I, I disagree with that because why would, a lot of people like that everyone's gonna train their own models. For me, that's like everyone's gonna launch their own university. Why would you do that when you can have your own models via the open source models that we make? Or when you can hire them from McKinsey, which is OpenAI, or Bain, which is Google and others. And actually, when you see people building around this technology, it's not hideously complicated. It's just that we do not have the design patterns yet. The way to think about this, again, if from a design perspective, is like it's a mega codec or library. It is a single file that allows for translation of structured to unstructured data. Um, and that changes the design patterns, but we don't have them in place yet. Because anyone that you've talked to is like, how hard was it to implement GPT-4? Do any of you say, oh man, it was impossible, the manuals and this? No, they don't say that at all. That's true. The only thing that they need is they have the open plasticity, but they need the intention to go and build and integrate. And this is why you said one of the things might be a specialist generative AI consultancy that just implements this at scale and says, I'm always kind of there. Like I said, we're doing that in a very limited fashion, but only for the biggest companies in the world because I didn't want a sales-based organization or a product-based organization. I wanted to create the number one applied ML organization in the world. I want to be like Google in 2011, 2012, where all the coolest kids kind of come. And it's a nice remote first organization as well, so you don't have to be in the Bay Area. You know, we have offices there, you know, it's fine. But. Final, final one before we do a quick fire. What's the biggest misconception? You see every accusation, criticism, hype. What's the biggest misconception that you think needs to be corrected? On generative AI? Yeah. Um, I think it's the, the hallucination thing expecting these models to have full factual accuracy when you have 10,000, 50,000 to one compression is wrong. The fact they can do what they do right now is miraculous. But we're using them one-on-one, -on -one, which is not the right way. Tie them up into proper systems and really think about that. And that's the key thing. I think this also leads to what the actual thing is, this thin layer thing. People need to think better about the data journey and how data can be interacted with and have provenance as it goes through these various systems from embeddings to other stuff. So I think just a misunderstanding about the nature of this technology and what was actually built for. Sure, it works like that. That's not actually how it's built. And the fact it can do what it now does now is a miracle in itself. 